So hopefully you've gotten a good hang on frame animations and using tweening and all of those other cool features to animate those two exercises. And, you know, I talked a little bit about the video timeline last week, and that's what we're going to do this week here. So we're going to go into another animation technique that Photoshop has to offer, and then I'll show you puppet warping as well. And then that will be it as far as the exercises go. And then recall you still have your final project due next week. So I'm just going to hit play here and just kind of show you what I was doing, and I'll talk a little bit more about this. So what I have here is, you know, I was playing around with that robotics logo, and I thought it would be a good example to show all of you on how to work with the video timeline. So there's the sample Photoshop file there for you. You can go ahead and download that and have that ready, and we'll just be working with that together as a group. Um, just that way it's more consistent and we're all on the same page and doing the, and working with the same techniques and there's no confusion there. So the video timeline works a bit differently from the frame, an, frame animations. We can see here, and I'll, I'll go through all of this and, and explain this all as we work through this together, but what I'm using here is I'm using keyframes and I'm setting basically points where I want things to turn on and off or move. So if you've used any programs like Premiere or After Effects or Final Cut, then keyframes will be a bit more familiar to you. This is the more technical way of doing things in Photoshop as far as animations and movies are concerned. The frame animations are um, a lot simpler and a lot easier to grasp, where the, the video timeline here can be a little bit complicated and there's, there's a little bit more of a curve to it. But once you get it down, it's really, it's really quite easy. And you can always switch back and forth here. So down at the bottom left here, um, let me stop this. So for example, if I wanted to change this to frame animation, the bottom left hand corner here, convert to frame animation, I could do that. And then likewise in a frame animation, I could come and I can convert it to a video timeline. Now there may be some things that get lost in that conversion, so I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you can, you can get into a frame animation if you need to from the video timeline. So yeah, like I said, so I have everything working here. I have all of my layers, right? I have my timeline, and each one of these purple bars is a measurement of time, right? So that's the default here is five seconds, and each layer has its own timeline, and then you add in keyframes to that layer to tell it what to do. So I'm going to, let's stop this here, and let's come to, I'm just going to move this. So this is what you guys should all have. You should all have this Photoshop file. Right, where if we look at our layers, we have our background, we have left eye, right eye, nose, and then we have the text, but each letter is on its own individual later, and I'll, I'll explain why that is in a little bit here. So if we all have this, then let's go ahead and get started together as a group. So <clears throat> let's come up to Window and hit Timeline. So remember, so you get this drop-down menu, Create frame, anima frame Animation, Create Video Timeline. Let's hit Create Video Timeline, okay? And let's kind of go through this a little bit and, and see what we're working with here. So like I said, this purple bar is the measurement of time. If you look down at the bottom here, this little slider, this little mountain to the big mountain, that'll zoom you in and out to that timeline. So the larger it's going, right, the shorter increments of time I'm looking at. You can see across the top here, two frames, four frames, six frames. And then if I go down, I can, I can scroll out to see all of this in its entirety. So let's, let's scroll it so we can see the whole thing, right? So five seconds right there, and that's good. And all of our layers, right, are right here. So we have all of our layers here on the right-hand side, but then they're reproduced here in the video timeline on the left-hand side. So you can see as I click here on the left eye, right, it updates in my layers as well. And then same thing, if I click things over here, it will select that in the video timeline as well. So that's, that's really helpful there, okay? And each one of these purple bars has a drop down menu that I can pop down here. And these are the things that I'll do, right? These are the things that I can change. So if I'm on text, right, it, it looks a little bit different from just a rasterize image. So right here, if I click on nose and then I drop this down, we can see I have position, opacity, and style. We're actually gonna change these to smart objects, right? Because sometimes the positioning can get a little bit weird if they're not smart objects, and we want to be able to make sure that we have some um, seamless movements and things like this. So notice on the text, right, there's no position, but there's transform, which is the same thing, but we can do other things to that text that we couldn't necessarily do to a, a rasterized uh, image. So let's, let's collapse all this and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do 
is go ahead and the nose, the right eye, and the left eye. Let's turn these to smart objects. And that's just, remember, right-clicking, convert to smart object, okay? So now if I drop this menu down here, we can see position is gone and now it's transform, right? So don't worry about that. That's still, we're still gonna be able to move it. It's just called transform now because as a smart object, it will allow us to do things like um, scale it larger or smaller or basically use the free transform tool to it. So that's, we wanna have that because we may want to do, we may wanna do some things differently. So if we look back at our video, right, and this is, this is the one that I had done, and if I just play this again, we can kind of see what's happening here. So those two eyes are moving out of, right, coming into the screen, the nose is dropping down, those text letters are, are fading in one at a time. So we're going we're gonna to do something like this, right? We're going to work similarly to that, okay? So I'm back here, on, and you can adjust this too. If you want to see less of that timeline, you can scale this up or down. I just have this up so I can see more of that timeline. But the same if I want to zoom in or out, right? The same command plus or minus options work there. But this looks to be a good scale to work in. Okay, so notice, so I'm going to click up here. So I'm on the eyes right now here. So if I click on the left eye, right? It updates in the layers channel and in the frame animation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this menu down. Okay, nope. drop this down. And this blue scrubber bar, this is moving me through, right? Through time. And if you see the little, this little bluish, greenish, like choppy line thing that's happening there, that's showing me how much of the video is rendered, basically. So if it's, if it's a nice, smooth, continuous line, then it'll play, ba play back nicely. But if it's got some choppy gaps in it, then you may get some lag and some rendering time there. So, but right now there's nothing, there's nothing to do. I mean, there's no, if I play it, nothing happens because I haven't told these layers to move or do anything. So here's how keyframes work, like, right? And if you've used other programs, then you'll be a little bit more familiar with this. And just note that Photoshop probably isn't, you know, the strongest program to use for things like this, but it can get the job done. But if you were wanting to get more in depth and more intricate, I would definitely recommend something like, like After Effects or Premiere or whatnot. But okay, enough of my babbling, let's get started. So the left eye here, so it's gonna start off camera, right? Or we don't want it on the, on the screen, right? And then the, the final positioning of the eyes and the nose and the, you know, the right eye, the left eye and the nose are all in a static point. So what I wanna do is let's just say, so I'm gonna move up to, I'm gonna move up to a second and a half right here in between the one and the two and transform, right? So that's where I'm gonna set my keyframe. So this little stopwatch button looking thing right here, enable keyframe animation. I'm just gonna click that. And what, that, what that's doing is that at this 1.5 second mark, it's locking in the position of this left eye and it's saying, okay, that is where this eye is gonna be at that moment in time. So same thing for the right eye, right? I'm still on that same, uh, I'm at that same time, right? So the right eye, I'm gonna hit this button as well, and that's gonna set another keyframe. And then on the nose, the same thing. I'm gonna hit the same button here, transform, and I just set a keyframe. So for the, the left eye, the right eye, and the nose, I set, I set a keyframe for each one at the 1.5 second mark, okay? So if I hit play, nothing happens yet still because I haven't, right, there's been no movement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the beginning of the movie, right? The beginning of the animation and just make sure, you know, you can scroll that red line all the way to the left. And now if I click on left eye, now I need to tell Photoshop where I want that eye to be at the very beginning. So I'm just gonna hold shift, or sorry, I'm gonna hit V and then I'm gonna hold shift and then click that eye and I'm just gonna drag it off, off screen about there. I'll just leave a little bit of the eye on the canvas so I can so I can grab it again and then notice it updated a key point automatically right as soon as I let go it put in a key frame at the very beginning so if I hit play now right we can see it so it did a little bit of its own tweening right there right so I guess I worked a little backwards I put in the second keyframe first and then the first keyframe second the reason I did that is because the eye that the eyes and the nose were where I already wanted them to be so I just kind of locked them in position a little bit later, but you could have done this the other way around. You could have, you could have come to the very beginning. In fact, I'll do it right now. Let me just 
I'll delete these keyframes just so you can see that, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. So if I come to the very beginning, okay, I'm going to click on my eye, I'm going to shift, click, and I'm going to move it off, right? Move it off to about right there. And then I'm going to hit the stopwatch that plants it in right there. That marks it in as a keyframe. And then I'm going to move the scrubber bar back to that 1.5. And then I'm going to hit V and I'm going to click that I and then I'm going to just click and I'm going to drag it in right to about right there. And then notice it updated. It put in a keyframe already. And then if I go back and then hit play, we can see that I moves in just like that. Okay. So same thing for the right eye, right? I'm going to come to the very beginning. Okay. Make sure I, you know, click right, make sure I'm on right eye. I'm going to hold shift, click that. I'm holding shift to keep it on that nice horizontal line, right? So I don't want to, so I don't want to move it up or down accidentally. Okay. And then it popped in a keyframe there. And then now if I hit play, there we go. Both of those eyes are moving in. And then for the nose, I'll come to the beginning. Okay, and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to move that up. All right, up just just out of the screen a little bit that updated with the keyframe. So now if I hit play, we get we get that kind of movement. Okay, now we're going to work with the opacity here. So I'm going to come down the left eye. Okay, let me play so I get this out here and right. So as I scrub through right it the motion updates. So let's come to the very beginning. And then the opacity I'm going to set, I'm going to click that stop, stop timer button looking thing again. That adds in a keyframe and then I'm going to come into my opacity here and I'm going to put it all the way down. Okay. And then if I hit play, right. So that keyframe, right, it's saying start with, you know, zero opacity, but then it never updates. So I never, it never comes back into view again. So I'm going to line it back up with where those, you know, where the eyes lock back into position and that nose drops down. And then here I'm going to set a keyframe on the opacity, right? And I'm going to set this up to 100. So what Photoshop is, is being told to do is that at the keyframe of zero, right? Start at zero opacity. And then I'm, as I move through the frames, right? You can see the opacity updating here every time I let go, but it's going to gradually come more and more into view until it finally hits a hundred right here, right? So that gives it a nice, you know, fade in where it's, it's slowly coming more and more into view. Okay. So let's do that for the right eye. Okay. So the right eye here, we'll click the opacity that adds in the keyframe, bring this all the way down. We'll scrub over till we get back in line with these other keyframes put in another keyframe, right? And then we'll set this to 100. Okay. And then we'll do this with the nose as well. Okay. So my scrubber all the way on the left, add in a keyframe, set that opacity all the way down, bring that over to line up with the others and we'll set that opacity to 100. Okay. Now, if we play it, we get that. We have a nice little, right? These objects coming into view and, and assembling together. Okay, so notice my text though is still there. And the reason why I had each one of the letters on their own individual layer is because I want each layer to pop into view on its own. So in order to do that, they have to be on their own layer. So if I, if I had them all written out on one, I wouldn't be able to control them independently. So. I have my first letter R, right? And what I'm going to do for all of these, right? For all of these, at the very beginning, the opacity is going to be set at zero. So we'll just start with the R right now, okay? So notice the R is gone from here. And what I want the text to do is let's just say, I don't know, maybe like right before the eye and the nose, the eyes and the nose come together, maybe like 
right around here, maybe the one second part, maybe this is where this is where I want the, the first letter to come into view here. So I'm going to set, well, okay, so here I'm going to set the opacity, I'm going to set it to 100, but notice what it does here, right? If I do that, that means the R is going to start coming into focus at the very beginning of the video, or it's going to start becoming... Let's just see what this looks like here. So that's, that's too fast, right? I don't, I don't want it to do that. So let's say the R is going to stay at zero opacity, and then I'm going to put in another key, keyframe here, and I'm going to set this to zero. So at this keyframe, Photoshop is saying, okay, keep that R at zero keep the R at zero. So from here to here is it's it's going from zero to a hundred, right? I didn't want it to start here. Okay, that's better. Okay. So let's go through so let's go through these letters individually and maybe hopefully this will kind of make more sense as I'm doing this. We're on the O now, okay? And I want it to be invisible at the beginning so I'm going to set this opacity down to zero okay and I want it to start coming into view right after the R right so what I'm gonna do is when the R is at 100% right here this is I'm gonna I'm gonna set my opacity here to still to be zero okay so it's at zero, it's at zero, and then the next increment of time here, I'll set a keyframe and I'll set this opacity to 100, okay? So again, what I'm doing is, is I'm making sure that each of the letters is fading in, right? And that the next letter starts when the first letter has come fully into view. So here the R is at 100, and then that O starts to come into view, right, till it gets to 100, and then what I'll do is the B will start coming into view here on this keyframe, and so forth. So you'll see that you have to set each one to be at zero, and then at zero again when that other letter, when that first letter comes into view, and then the next increment of time here, the next 15 frames is where it has the opportunity to go from zero to 100, okay? Sorry if this sounds confusing, but it's kind of the only way I know how to cover this. Okay, so let's go to the B, okay? And at the very first keyframe, we'll set the opacity to zero. Okay, we'll move that scrubber along, right? So I'm looking at the O underneath it, right? So this is where the O right here starts coming into view, so I'm still gonna keep that B at zero zero opacity. So right here, I'm going to put in the keyframe, set that opacity to zero, and then this increment here will be when it can come to 100. Okay, so again, I'll play this back here. So we see each one of those popping into view, right? Okay, and then let's come to the other O, drop this down. Okay, so Hit my opacity, set a keyframe there at zero. Okay, we'll move this along here till we get over this last keyframe of the last letter, the B. I'm gonna put a keyframe in here at zero as well. Okay, and then the next increment will be the keyframe where it goes to 100. Hopefully this is kind of clicking and making sense now. I know it kind of seemed a little bit jumbled here, but as we're getting through it, hopefully you can see how this is how this is working, right, through the timeline. So here we're on the T, set the opacity to zero. Okay, I'll move this along here. And I'm gonna set the keyframe to zero. Or set the opacity, set the keyframe opacity to zero. So all this time in between here, so it's it's at zero, and then it's staying at zero, staying at zero. It's, and this is where we've told it to, from, to go from zero 
And then now here, so this next increment is we're telling it to now go up to 100, right? Between here and here, okay? We'll do the same for the I. I'll kind of go through this a little bit quickly now. So Okay, there we go. I saw I kind of messed up there. I forgot I, I didn't change my opacities where I needed them to be. So I'm going to collapse all of this here just for some easier viewing. So we have our animation now. And what I'm going to do here is in this kind of downtime after the eyes and the nose come together is I want to I want to give the illusion that this robot is blinking. Right, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to create some new, I'm gonna have to create a new layer here, okay? And watch, we'll see, as I create a new layer here, wherever the scrubber is on my animation is where that new layer will come into play. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a new layer. See, and notice it snapped right to where the scrubber is, but I can move this, right? That doesn't mean it's, it's permanent there. So, and on this layer, I'm gonna create two I'm going to create two circles here, and I'm going to fill these in with black. Okay. I'm actually going to, I'm going to option click and copy that. Okay. So I have both of these circles on one layer here, right? And I can turn this, I can turn this on, turn this off. And you know, there's a couple of different ways that you could do this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, just to show you that you can shorten the time on each one of these purple, um, purple frame spans of time. I'm just going to click like, you know, if I hover over the end of this here, you see those two little arrows, same thing here, you see those. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click, I'm just going to reduce that down. Okay. And I'm going to move it, right? to where I think the, you know, basically as soon as it hits that, it's gonna register those two, those two circles and it'll display them. And then as the purple, as it ends, it then disappears, right? So let me just see what this looks like here. Okay, so that, so a little blink there, that looks okay. And then I want two blinks, so I'm going to take this layer here. Let me stop this. So making sure I'm on this layer here, I'm just going to Command C and then Command V. And that creates another layer, and then it creates another timeline. And then I'm just going to drag this over a little bit. Okay, and then notice the position didn't update here, or at least it didn't go exactly where I want it. So I'm going to hover over where this is, and I'm just going to hit V and move that up so it blocks those eyes. Okay, so that looks okay. It looks like it's... So I have these two layers on their own individual timelines. I could click, I could bring this down into here and drop that, but then what it does is it puts it into a video group, and then it can kind of make things a little bit more clunky and, and cluttered if you're not you know, if you're not quite sure of, of how you want those groups to work. So I'm just going to undo that and keep them separately. And there's multiple ways I could have done this. I just wanted to show what this would look like if I added in just two more layers and just shortened the visual time by, you know, scaling down that purple bar and making it so these only appear for those split seconds. Okay, so this is the weekly exercise that you're going to work on. You don't have to do exactly what I've done here. Basically, you just have to take this Photoshop file with the eyes, the nose, and the text, and you have to use the, the full five seconds here, and you have to animate this logo any way you'd like. You could do exactly what we've done here in the video if you just want to get through it. Um, and then you'll send me the Photoshop file so I can see your layers, right? But the other thing that you can do here is, you know, we all know how to do the animated GIF export. So if we go to export and then save for web, that gives us the animated GIF that we were doing last week. But if you come down here to this little arrow, 
right? This would be, this is how we could render the video and save it as, for example, an MP4 file. So if you just wanted a video, a video format, and this H.264, this is what you want to leave it on, right? Just leave it on that. And then this would be um, a little short movie that we could, that we could have, right? And depending on how much, um, how complicated you've made it and how, you know, how big the file is, the rendering time could take a while, but, you know, basically when that's done, you have yourself, you know, a movie that you could, if you wanted to build, for example, um, you know, an animated logo for a video or something, this is, this would be one way that you could go about doing it. Okay. So I hope that made sense. I know it kind of felt like, you know, for some of you, if this is your first time working with a video timeline, it could be a bit overwhelming, but go through it, you know, email me if you have questions and hopefully, right, the text, like I said, you don't have to do exactly what I did with the text. I just wanted to show you what, we, what you could do with those individual letters, right? Let's see what you guys can do.